Amen, 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 amen. God bless, amen, in the precious name of Jesus, amen. We're here for a special edition is what God gave me. It's a special edition about exposing Satan first as an individual and second as the body of Christ. Again, I love twofold messages, amen. And this is a twofold message that God is saying in this hour, amen. I'm, I'm just waiting for others to join, amen. Um, some may have difficulties um, trying to uh, get this, but however, um, nevertheless, we are still going to um, go ahead and we're going to go forward, amen, in the precious, precious name of Jesus, amen, and um, this recording, amen, is going on live, it's going to go on air, amen, um, which we will put this on, it will be on YouTube, it will be on Facebook, it will be on Instagram, as well as on Twitter, um, is what this will be on. Um, and basically it's about exposing Satan or better yet, exposing our enemy. We have an enemy and and i'm not this is just something i'm saying right now um but it's all part of one we do have an enemy okay our enemy is not your husband is not your wife it's not your children it's not a family member but our enemy, and the Bible declares arch enemy, your main enemy is Satan, also who is called Lucifer. Uh, that is our enemy. The enemy has demons, fallen angels, same thing, um, that left that actually was cast out of heaven. Um, when they hit earth, they became fallen angels, also known as demons. And there are a lot of demons in this world and they basically live inside of our human body. Amen. They actually live in our human body. Um, I just thank God for what God is, is doing in this hour. I'm just so excited. I had to just pause this because basically I'm just, I'm just praising God on the inside for what he is doing and, and the things that he is showing. Amen. In this hour. Amen. And I'm going to talk a little bit about, let me see, I think someone is trying to uh, come on here. Uh-oh, I don't knock myself out the box. Amen. Uh, let's see here. Um, and amen, I'm still learning this thing. Amen myself here. Um, just so. Uh, Bear with me a moment. Amen. I'm basically trying to see. Um, amen. Um, just bear with me because with this technology, I'm kind of uh, new myself. Um, in this uh, technology here, look like something is going on here. Amen. But 
um, they'll catch up and, you know, I'll pause at any given time and uh, we'll go ahead and bring in the others. Amen. Um, that, that will tune in. And like I said, if not, then this is being recorded. Amen. And it will go throughout on uh, social media. But this is very important. Um, as in the body of Christ and as children of God, amen, that um, we do have an enemy, amen. And also uh, there are those demons and each, each demon, amen, has a name. But before I go forward in anything else, um, I want to first acknowledge God and, and go into prayer, amen. Father, right now, God, I just glorify thy precious, precious holy name. Holy, holy, holy. Thou art holy. Thou art worthy of the praise, the honor, and glory. Thou art the creator of heaven and earth and the sea and all of them that is therein. Father, right now, I just take time just to glorify the majestic King, Lord of Lords and Prince and of Princes and there is none beside thee. There will never be none like unto thee. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise ye thy name. Glory to God. And Father, anything that we have done, anything that we have said that was not right in thy sight nor pleasant in thine ears, God, that you will forgive us, bring it to our knowledge that we may humble and that we may repent. And Father, in the name of Jesus, let thy word be spread abroad from here to New Mexico, to California, to Jamaica, to Kentucky, to all over the earth, even unto the four corners and the uttermost parts of this world. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen. Again, um, I just thank God again for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But now, as, as I was saying earlier, is that it's time to expose Satan. Amen. Now, also exposing our enemy. Now, it is written in Jeremiah, the first chapter, and the fifth verse, and I want you all to write this down. Jeremiah, the first chapter, the fifth verse. God formed us and knew who we was while we was yet still in our mother's womb. He had already appointed, anointed, and ordained us while we were yet in our mother's womb. Uh-oh, I done hit a little something. Uh-oh, I done did it again. Just bear with me. Amen. I'm, I'm still learning this uh, technology here. So now that we understand where we are in God. Here is our enemy, not your enemy, just for you only, not just for me, but our enemy. <clears throat> Satan has fallen angels. Well, they demons, they were angels, but they, they were, well, they was cast out of heaven. Each demon has a name. And these demons 
It's not just one that come literally and live inside of us, but is more than one. It could be about 10, maybe 20, maybe a hundred demons that live inside of us. And some of them have names that we don't even know, but we do these things that dwell in our mortal bodies and it causes us to sin. And when we sin, we are sinning against God, which when Satan can get to a point, now he don't know our thoughts. He have no idea what we're going to do. He have no, uh, he don't have no idea of our reactions, but all he could do is throw and see exactly what the reactions is going to be. It is his job for us to sin against God because he in his mind want God to turn his back. And once God begin to turn his back on us, he figures that death comes. And when death take place, there is no time to say nothing. And then at that point, we will lift up our eyes and we will lift up our eyes, amen, in a burning hell. Now, the Bible declares in John, the 10th chapter and the 10th verse, the thief coming cometh not but for to kill, steal, and destroy our soul. But let me get back here to the beginning. And I'm going to read that again. John, the 10th chapter and the 10th verse. Now. First of all, we're going to go to as an individual. Now, when you're not saved, okay, I'm going three ways here. When we are not saved, okay, there are all kinds of spirits, unclean, foul spirits that dwells within us. Now, there are seven, seven deadly, deadly sins. And when we're not saved, now I'm going to the non-saved, to the saved, uh, to the supposed to be saved, and that's it. Amen. Now, and I'm smiling. Pride is one of them. I'm calling out the seven deadly sins. Okay? That you want to go and lead fast. Keep walking in these ways and God will turn his back. Now, the seven deadly sins... I'm going to go over it again and I'm, and I'm really trying to take my, I'm taking my time here because I need you to have an understanding and I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're rich. I don't have, I don't care if you have a lot of money. I don't care if you poor because this word go to the rich, to the poor, to the bond, to the free. It goes to all. No one is exempt from the word of the Lord. Now, you have pride is a deadly sin. Number one, if you're not saved, 
These are one of the spirits that you carry within yourself. And when you have this spirit of pride, you're not even listening to God. You can't even hear God. That in spirits, they travel in packs, amen, like wool. Like they say about black folks, okay, uh, we travel in packs, amen, but that was way back then. Uh, but they travel in packs, amen. Now, pride is a person that's arrogant, that's a self-reliant attitude, you pretty much is a person that's puffed up about themselves, looking in the mirror. Oh, I am beautiful. Oh, I am gorgeous. Oh, I am handsome. Oh, I'm a good looking, I'm a good looking man. And, and, and I know what I can get. That is a spirit of pride. And when you are not saved, you carry that spirit. Now you have those that say that they are saved, but yet and still, you still walk with a spirit of pride. And, and I'm going to back up because I want to say this here. Now, those that are not saved, they're going to walk with pride anyway. But though the ones that say that they are saved and still walk with pride, you only have a form of godliness because you can pray, because you can say hallelujah, and just because you can say in the name of Jesus, that does not make you right with God because you still have that spirit of pride. Now, we moving over to the body of Christ. Now we're talking about individuals as an individuality. We're talking about the ones that say that they're saved. And then we're talking about the body of Christ. When it comes to the body of Christ, you have some churches, some organizations, some foundations that have so much pride within themselves that not only the leader walk that way, but also the members with the leaders walk the same way with a spirit of pride that can't nobody teach or tell you nothing because you have an arrogant spirit. You have a heady high mind. This is to the body of Christ. And this is why <clears throat> one of the reasons that we can't join hands and see us ourselves as the body of Christ. For we are many members. Oh, it's a lot of us all over the world. But there's only one body. Now, and when we go and stand before the judgment seat of God, we're going as one, not the name of a church, not because you was part of our apostolic faith or any church, any congregation, any organization. You're coming before God for your love and what you had for him. Now, one of that's one of the deadly spirits, which is pride. I'm gonna try to get through all of them, but if I can't, we'll be coming on again next Sunday at 7 p.m. through Zoom. And preferably, Lord's will, we're gonna have um, some other pastors, evangelists. I mean, if you have that, ministerial call on your life, then yes, we will call you because you have a job in the kingdom 
And that job in the kingdom is to snatch souls out of the fire. People is going to hell. They are dying and they're going to hell every day. Then I don't know God is a merciful God because, uh, well, I do know warning comes before destruction. But there is no laborers out here for the harvest to have enough love to preach the gospel anymore. I'm going to get to the next one because I'm almost going to jump ahead of myself. Now, covetousness. That is a second deadly sin to have in you covetousness want what somebody else got either they husband they wife you covet someone's lifestyle you're not happy with yours so you want to cover a lifestyle of someone else you want to be like someone else you want to have the attributes of someone else so this is more of covetousness which is the second deadly sin that is in the word of the Lord now you a sinner you have that spirit and I will say if you have any of these spirits and you know you do listen you know what you have and what you don't have it's time to repent and ask God to forgive you now not only is it within the sinner as being a sinner, but it goes on. You have those that say that they're saved. They'll sing in the choir. They'll shake the pastor's hand. They'll cut a rug. They'll sing like a canary. But at the same time, on the inside, they covet. They have that spirit. They want to be able to preach like somebody else. You got people around here trying to uh, uh, preach like John Hagee or Juanita Bynum or, or, or T.D. Jake. Be what God has called you to be. But that spirit of covetousness is in the body of Christ. And you're saying that you say, and again, I'm going to say the same thing. You could sing, you could preach, you could even lay hands on the sick as being in the body of Christ. But if you don't have that love, then you are of your father, the devil. If you have this spirit, God say repent. Because each one of us has a special gift from God. There's no time for that. Now I'm going to tell you what comes with covetousness. But it's not part of the seven deadly sins. But I told you they, they they come in packs. If you covet, jealousy come with covet. Can you imagine how many demons that live within us? And jealousy come with covetousness. Because if you covet over what somebody else got, you got a spirit of jealous. You got a spirit of anger. You got a spirit of strife. You got a spirit of malice. And it's plenty more. That's just a few that I named, but I'm calling the seven deadly sin. Now, it's also in the body of Christ. You have leaders want to still got want to be a pimp in the pulpit. Okay, they had those ways in the world, and they want to be high. They want to be mighty. They want the limelight. They want the Jerry curl. They want the expensive, expensive cologne and perfume because they covet 
what somebody else has got. They want a big church. They want a large congregation. They want to try to be a copycat. And also with covetousness is jealousy, envy, strife, and malice. And this is what's going on in the body of Christ. But if we learn how to come together and do this number and join together and don't be so, whew, how can I say it, Lord? We want these earthly things. We yearn these earthly things rather than the things of God. See, once we start yearning the things of God, these earthly things won't bother us and come in our way. Now, listen, you have the world killing each other today. You got the young boys out there, or uh, they feel like one is making more money than the other, or uh, then pop your pop because they want to get you out of the way. So this is the same scenario going on in the body of Christ. We won't come together because we think somebody going to come and take our member. Listen, what God has for you, what's meant for you is going to be for you. If you know God, then you should not feel <clears throat> about somebody coming in, somebody could preach better. What are they coming in to take anybody, amen, out of your fold? Because what's for you is for you. What's for the next person is for the next person. Now, covetousness, covet, the same thing. Now, we have lust. You can go into Matthew, the fifth chapter. And the 28th verse, lust. Lust is a, one of the seven deadly sins. As a matter of fact, it's the third deadly sin. Now you're not saved. You have a spirit of lust. You're a woman and want, and want to bend over for every man that you see. You want to show your body. You want to show your hips. Because you want some man to look and lust after you because you lust, and you lust after the man. And that's vice versa with a man. Amen. Lust. Uh, lusting for money. I mean, just lusting for material things. And lust is more or less like on a, on a fornication or adultery because those spirits will follow lust. Okay? It, the, well, it's not in here at the seven deadly sins um with the adultery and fornication but it goes with lust but the deadly sin is lust and you will find that in matthew the fifth chapter and the 28th verse also you say that you're saved now this to the sinner and the saint or the ain't and the body of christ you say that you're saved but yet and still, you coming in the church, you speaking in some kind of tongue, and I'm going to say this here. I don't know why people want to come inside the house of God, and they want to speak in tongue for this long time, and ain't got no interpretation. But let me give you a teaching real quick. Anytime someone speak in a tongue, let it be one or two words to himself. But when tongue speaking is going on in the body of Christ, there should be an interpreter or some have the gift where they could speak in tongues and God give that person themselves the interpretation. But if not, that other person should be able to interpretate. Speaking in that unknown tongue. And when that person interpretate, God always speak to the body of Christ. Amen. He lets us know their sin in the camp and his arms is open. Get it right. Amen. Now, but you're saying that you're saved. 
and you have lust in your heart. And the Bible declares that when a man or woman lusts after each other, or you could look at a man and just start lusting after him, if you marry, you don't commit adultery already. You didn't have to do the act, but you committed adultery already because it was in your heart. And that's vice versa. And you're saying that you're saved. Now, throughout the body of Christ, leaders have allowed such things to come in the pulpit. Women and young ladies can't even come in the church humble anymore to surrender their soul to God because the pastor's rubbing their hand and want to see them out the church. Other women or other women and have babies. It's nothing but lust that's going on in the body of Christ. If we're able to join hands like this here and go out in the street and the highways and byways and compel as a unit, we won't have time for that deadly sin right now. The next one is anger. Anger, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the 31st to the 32nd verse. Anger. Anger, you're not saved, and you're going to have that spirit of anger in you. Anger also brings bitterness with it. Bitterness is going to bring hurt with him. Hurt is also going to bring unforgiveness with him. Now you have just those and as many more that goes with anger. But anger is a deadly sin. You say that you save this to the saint. You say that you saved and love God. But you can't forgive somebody or something that happened to you 20 years ago or five years ago. You're still holding on to it instead of walking in victory. Then I hear so many say, oh, I can forgive, honey, but I can't forget. Well, you got issues. Because God definitely take our sin and cast it in the sea of forgetfulness. And we're supposed to be just like him. Okay. Now, you have the body of Christ. In the body, a reason why we can't come together as one is because we have anger in our heart. We don't want to fellowship, but with certain people that we know, Oh, I ain't no fellowship with nobody but but sister 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 D and um uh and they church and I'm just gonna fellowship with uh brother John or Pastor John and him and his fellowship. I don't know the rest of y'all. I don't want to be part of y'all because y'all just ain't right. You have anger in your heart, and anger bring alone the rest of them. And that's within the body of Christ. I'm going to do one more because I don't want to be long. And next Sunday, we're going to continue at 7 p.m. The next one is gluttony. Proverbs, the 23rd chapter and the 21st verse. Gluttony is one of the fifth deadly sin. Overeating. 
laziness also come with gluttony, which is a deadly sin, which is uh, slowful, but I get to that. Amen. But all of these spirits work together, but they are seven deadly sins that some of us walk around here every day with gluttony. I hear somebody say, well, I don't eat that much. Well, it's not about natural food. You gluttony. You're drinking beer. You're cursing like a sailor. You're full of that. You should be full because some of y'all out there curse like a sailor. You got a lot of them. I mean, every word come out your mouth, uh, it, it, you, it's a curse word because you you full of it. <laughs> you gluttony. You done sighted in those words and you know them like the back of your hand. Amen. Drinking. Gluttony. You want everything. You want everything. In the world. You say. And say you love God. But you want everything. You ain't happy. You want the limelight. You might want to be the pastor of the church. Things, if things ain't going your way, you you just upset. That's gluttony. You want that's still wanting what somebody else got. Some of you mad because you're not in a pastoral position. Some of you, and I'm talking about those that are saved now. That's in the body of Christ. God told me to expose. Satan, and I am exposing his characteristics. And if you have these characteristics, then he is your father because you have his characteristics and not the characteristics of God. I told you this going to blow your mind. But listen, Jesus is here now. Jesus is here. Oh, glory to God. Jesus is here to clinch you. And to have you to walk worthy before him. Satan has no power, no control. Even though you have these spirits and he your daddy right now because you following after his way. You could talk Jesus all day, but you still following after your father, the devil, because you got his way. You got more of his way than you have any kind of way of God. Now you might have a little God. But you got a lot of say, okay? But Jesus is a redeemer. He's a healer. He will set you free. Now, listen. Gluttony. You want everything. There it is. You want the limelight. That's it, it, you, gluttony. You, you can't have enough. You want all the job. You want to be the head of every job. You want to be the manager of every job. You want to stand in the gap. You want, you want to try to see if you could do more than eight things at one time to show that you faithful with all them eight things you could do. <clears throat> Gluttony. Trying to be a jack of all trades and a master at nothing. Glory to God. Now, in the body of Christ. This is for the body. Leaders. Gluttony. Special leaders. God is allowing most of these leaders to still stand. But he's angry. Because it's a lot of gluttony in leaders. They want all the members. Obviously, they want all the women. And the men nine days. Even the men could come in and have position and they homosexual. And because even the pastor got something going on. You got hey, come on now. What they say, we in a new modern day, sin is expanding, baby. Okay. You got leaders want the men and the women. When the young men get a certain age, you better watch these pastors around your young son. 
amen, want the sun, they come to my office and come to my quarter at a certain time, oh, I'm going to do some things with the boy and be really be doing some things with your son. You better watch that. You better use wisdom, gluttony. Want all the members. They want all the money. They want all the limelight. They want to look good. They want to dress good. They want to act good. And then I love it when they come in <laughs> and ain't going to preach about sin, but they'll tell you about Daniel in the lion's den. But they don't get to the depths of Daniel being in the lion's den. I, I, I'm, I don't want to go there. Lord help me. Listen. <coughs> Excuse me. This is to the body of Christ. God gave this to me for individuals, for those that say that they're saved, and also to the body of Christ. Now, you have envy and you have sloth. And we're going to finish those up next Sunday at 7. We're going to finish up. There's a lot. There's a lot here. And I guarantee you, watch this, join this, and you will become a new creature because Jesus will come in and deliver you and set you free. Father, we just thank you for your word on tonight. We thank you, God, for helping us see the cunningness of Satan, our enemy. Father, in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray every leader throughout this world, throughout every city, throughout every town, whether they're Baptist, whether they're Meth Methodist, whether they're Lutheran, whether they're AME, whether they're Holiness, whether they're Church of God in Christ, Father, right now, that you bring us together as one, that the walls of denomination and tradition is torn down, that the walls of religion and formality is torn down and that we do come together as one and reap the harvest. Give us the wisdom, give us the knowledge and the understanding. Help us to reach out one to another to make this change. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. Amen. I thank God for each of you, 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 and you. Amen for, for tuning in. And, and I tell you, if I didn't have these grandbabies, I, I would be out there. But unfortunately, I have them. I love them. And everything is basically on God's timing. Amen. I'm not in a hurry. I'm not in a rush. I'm just here. Amen. Waiting on God's timing. And um, when God's timing is ready, amen, I will be Amen. Out there like white is on rice. God bless you. And I love you in the precious name of Jesus. God bless you.